It's lunchtime and I have another meal I want to share with you today. This time it's a deep dish omelet or quiche. I guess it'll qualify as either. Now, uh, this didn't start out as a keto or low carb meal, but boy, was it ever easy to convert. So what I'm going to do is take you down to my improvised kitchen on the ground down here, put the ingredients together. I will be baking this in a pot that I've been testing for some time, and I will be using charcoal rather than an open fire because, hey, it's fire ban season again, but at least we'll get it baked and, uh, well, let's get started. All right, so I have everything laid out in front of me. Get the tree dust out of my bowl uh, so that I can start the quiche, and I'll start working on this with you. I'll quickly go through the ingredients I have for you and the process. I'll put the amounts and everything in the video description if you want to copy this for yourself. So, start with two eggs. We'll get those in right away, get those started. I do need to whisk them up a little bit, so I did bring a tiny whisk with me. And I think I can probably use this to crack them with. All right, one egg in. I will be recovering the shells, of course. There we go. Two eggs in. I'll give those a preliminary whisk before I start adding the other ingredients to it. This is one of those really, really simple little dishes to put together once you see it done at least once. All right, so that's mixed together. Now, I have some spices in this little jar right here. It's a mixture of some garlic powder, some black pepper, and Italian seasoning. So let's throw those in. And of course, this is all variable. Whatever you feel it should be is what it should be. So we'll just kind of mix that in. Boy, I got a lot in there, don't I? That's right, I got a lot more ingredients. Not a lot, but a few more ingredients that are gonna go in on top of this as well. All right, so the next thing I have is some chopped green onions. That's in, put those aside. I have some diced tomato here as well. And again, the ingredients are up to your interpretation. They're not the what makes this or breaks it. And next I have some bacon that I fried up at home. Yes, I could have done it out here in the woods. I'm just saving a little bit of time. And some sausage that's also cooked at home. So bacon and sausage. Boy, this is gonna be a protein heavy meal for sure. Nothing wrong with that though. And now I just mix that all together. So basically this is the ingredients that will go into my omelet. However, there is one more thing I have to do. This is my baking pan, and I have to put my shell in. Now, for the shell, I'm using a tortilla wrap. Now, you can use any tortilla wrap that you want. I mean, you can go to the grocery store and buy whatever you want, but I'm gonna be using a, get the dust out of there as well, a low carb tortilla wrap. And I actually brought the wrapper out for it, and this is not an endorsement or anything, but this is one I can find available to me here. I get these from Costco. They're an eight inch tortilla wrap, and uh, they have 13 grams of fiber, but only 90 calories. Let's see if I can just find the back of it. So one tortilla, 41 grams, 90 calories, three grams of fat, 19 grams of carbohydrates, but 13 of those are fiber, four grams of protein. Definitely qualifies as a low carb thing. And where's my wrap at? I'll show what it looks like. Here it is here. I just used my cutting board to keep it from getting damaged when I brought it out. So the whole point of this is now to, is to put this inside of my dish. So this is where you mate up whatever size dish you have to whatever size tortilla. You can certainly make this larger if you're using regular tortillas, whatever size, the 10 inch ones. All I can get are these little, not little, well, yeah, I guess they are little eight inch ones. That's what I can get that are low carb. But once again, if you wanna go with a regular tortilla, then you can do that by all means. A little trick I have learned, this is parchment paper. I'm going to actually line my baking dish. Oh, my baking dish, by the way, is a 14 centimeter zebra billy pot pan, the pan that comes in. It just happens to be perfect for doing this with. So I'm lining that inside of there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the tortilla itself. It probably would have been smarter. Let's try it this way instead. Push the two of them in at the same time. So I'm trying to create a kind of a pie shell, if you will inside of the zebra billy pan, zebra billy pot pan. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. 
Okay, so you can see what I've got now. Just kind of pushed it in, pushed it down into the bottom so that I can put the rest of the ingredients inside. And that's all I'm going to do now is put the rest of the ingredients in there. And that pretty much fills that right up to the top. Push them around. Wow. Look how much meat and eggs and other bacon and all that goodness is in there. All right, now this is ready to go into the oven. Now, let me just put this aside so I can prep my oven. Uh, just off to the side, I have my titanium uh, Bush Box XL loaded with charcoal. Once again, I mentioned in the opening, we're under a fire ban. I can't have an open fire, but I can use charcoal, especially in a stove like this. And it is smoking hot. In fact, I'm yeah, there's a lot of heat there. I'm hoping I don't burn it. All right, so here's the pot that I'm using. This is one I've been testing. I have a separate review on. This is the Cook and Escape Mountaintop Pot, and it is a two liter, or 1950 milliliters to be more precise, titanium pot. So what drew my attention to it is its size, right? It's only four inches high, six and a half inches in diameter, but look at the lid. By the way, the lid doubles as a fry pan, and I have been using it as one. As you can see, it actually has a bit of seasoning on it there. But the lid is perfect for putting hot coals on top, so that's the reason that I thought this might make a good oven as well. Now, if you're going to have an oven, you have to have some kind of a spacer inside. So this is something I've used before. Uh, I have it in different shapes as well. This is a piece of aluminum that's bent into a triangle, which will sit down inside, and it's one inch uh, height, so it gives me a lift off of the bottom of one inch. That allows me to place my pot inside. It's going to be a little harder to get out than it was to put in. Put my lid on and when my charcoal is ready I'm going to put it on top. I'll take out some coals to put on top of this and it's going to take a little bit of time. Now how long? Well if this was at home and you were doing it in the oven you'd probably want to go 35 to 40 minutes at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, obviously I won't be doing that. I'll have to check on it more than, well, a few times to, to make sure that it doesn't burn. Um, there is one other ingredient and that is, this is shredded cheese. Now you can use cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese or anything. This is Monterey Jack with jalapeno and pepper inside of it. But I don't put that on, well, you could put it on now and it would cook in with everything else and then crusty, turn the crusty brown on top. But if all if you're looking to do is to just melt it and have a nice gooey top, then you do that about 10 minutes, five minutes before the rest of the quiche is done. Quiche, omelet, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm just going to set this up on top of the stove and we'll go on to the next step. All right, it's a bit windy, so I did put a windscreen around the stove and it's going to be on there for a while. I think I'm going to need a glove for this. So first thing I'm going to do is pull out some of those coals and put on top of the pot itself. See if I can get that. Yeah, that's fine. That'll work like that. So here's the, the pot I'm going to be putting it on. So let me put a few coals on top. I think I'll put four on. There's a lot of heat. I'm going to really have to be careful using this. Maybe I'll put one more on as well. Just put a full five on top of the pot. Now I got to get these trivet members on the stove. So with all that heat coming out of there, that's a bit tricky. Let's see if I can't do this without burning myself. All right, that's good. There's one. Just need a little bit of an air gap, that's all. And where's the other one? There we go, that's on. Now, put the rest of it up on top. That may be too much heat, but I'm gonna check it in a few minutes time and see how it's doing. And uh, I'll bring it back when I go to check it. All right, it's uh, been about 20, minutes, not quite 20 minutes. I've checked a couple of times and it's looking pretty good, but uh, this is the hard thing when you're working outdoors and you're trying to judge. Uh, can you see? Yeah, I'm trying to get out of my own side. Yeah, okay, we're, we're ready at least to go on to the next phase, which is to add some cheese. So now, 
I'm just going to touch that with a knife and see if it's going to drop on me. Oh, it's not quite done, so it still has a few minutes left, which is just what I was looking for. Let's get the cheese on top. I don't know why I'm saving it. Let's use it all. I hope I can finish it. This is, I've done this at home, but I didn't have quite this many ingredients inside, but nothing wrong with that either. I can actually hear it and it's down inside. Now, I'm going to put the lid back on from this side, I guess. And I'm going to take out, I'm going to need gloves for this. One or two more coals to put on top. I guess I need to lift it right off. I was going to add a little bit more inside just to uh, ensure that there was enough heat, but no, I don't think that's an issue. All right, we have, should have plenty of heat. Give it another five minutes. I think the cheese will be not only melted, but probably should be good and toasted on top. And uh, that's when I'll bring you back. So one lesson about baking like this with this kind of heat is don't get too distracted because one moment it looks good and the next moment, Maybe not. I haven't checked it in a few minutes, so let's have a look. I, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Just browning on top, as you can see, bubbling through. This meal is done. Now, the challenge for me is going to be getting it out of the pot. I don't think I've fully considered. I've got a, an idea of how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do is transfer this out of the pot, the baking dish, that is. It has to cool for at least five minutes. I wouldn't be able to touch it for the next five minutes anyway. And uh, then we'll take it out of the little baking dish, and we'll cut it up, and we'll try it out. All right, I thought. Throw the... Uh, coals back in, make immediate use of the heat, start working on my coffee. All right, let's see if we can get that out of the pot. All right, I have no idea how well this is going to work. This could turn out to be a bit of a disaster. I assumed it would work when I left the house, but I didn't practice it, so. Bail out of the way. And the idea was to use my tongs to at least start this up until I could get a well, actually look at that. I don't need to use anything other than the tongs. That worked out as I hoped and maybe even better. Okay, now I'll just let it cool off for a little while. And uh, when it's ready to serve, that's when I'll bring it back. All right, hopefully you can hear me. The uh, wind has picked up dramatically over the last little while. I'm trying to shelter the microphone. So I have let the deep dish omelet slash quiche cool now for oh, about yeah, seven or eight minutes. That should be enough. And here's where the parchment paper comes in. It allows you to lift it, as long as the cheese isn't stuck to anything. It allows you to lift it out of the baking dish. And I can plant it over here on my cutting board. Look at that, eh? Move this a little bit around so you get a better view of it. Now all that's left to do is to cut it and see what it looks like in the center. Still hot, of course. Look at that. Well, this is going to be a good sized meal. Still a bit hot. Let's see if I can show you the inside. All cooked up just nicely. So the, obviously what I need to do now is reposition the camera so we can do a taste test. All right, I debated whether or not I was going to do this all proper with a fork and a knife and cut it up like you might at home. And then I decided, no, I'm going to use my fingers. It's probably what I would do at home anyway. So why would I fancy up for the woods? Trying to get comfortable here. So, yeah. Look at that. That is exactly what you want. Can you see the crust on the bottom? Just nicely browned, nothing burnt. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for this one. Let's give it a taste test. Wow, that's all I can say. So I tried this at home, oh, it was some months ago. And, uh, you know, it was good, but it wasn't this good. I don't know if it was baking it in my Impromptu oven. I baked it in my oven at home. I hadn't baked it out in the woods before. 
Oh, part of it was I used bacon last time, but I didn't use sausage. I probably have a bit more of the Italian season in here, and there's a different cheese on top. I guess just depends on what you put in. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm a bit fancy. I'm using my bandana, not my sleeve, to wipe my mouth off, so. Mm. Mm. I can't get over that. I have had fun making food or cooking out here in the woods, and I've made some really good tasting dishes. Some that really surprised me. Some that were good, but you know, nothing shocking, just good food. This is one of those surprisingly good meals and easy to bake. And if you're on a low carb, high fat, high protein, this is really high protein more than anything else. You can't beat this. Eggs, sausage, bacon, cheese, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of onion, and a low carb wrap to hold it all together. Can't beat this meal. If you're not on a low carb meal, you want to use a regular tortilla. It's going to up the carbs a little bit, but it's going to turn out just as good and just as tasty. Perfect meal for one person. Actually, I'm not even sure I can finish it all, but I'm going to give it a good try. Okay, simple meal. Took a little bit of prep at home. Could have done that out here in the woods, but it, I saved a little bit of time by cutting everything up at home to, to make do the baking. It was unfortunate that I had to use charcoal rather than a wood fire. But charcoal is nice regardless because it's very controllable. You can control the heat and get it, you, you know, it's, it's a known quantity. The number of briquettes, the heat is even, it doesn't go down, rise up like you would with a wood fire. So yeah, I'm happy with the way it turned out. Uh, all the ingredients, the recipe will be in the video description if you're interested in trying this. If you uh, have any comments or questions about this meal, by all means, put them in the comments section. If you have suggestions for other meals you'd like me to try out here in the woods, ideally low carb or ketogenic meals, but and high protein as well. That's the, the type that I like to cook for myself. But if it isn't, uh, suggest it anyway, and I'll see if I can't modify it to my diet. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.